Hello and welcome to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me Niall Murphy and here I am still out in that same bit of countryside that you saw me in in the last video. Um, I must admit man I love that row of trees there you know I really do just on that distant horizon and I love the haziness of the sunlight um, today too um, and you know it is so I'm recording this as I say the second video of the day on the 28th of November it's a very mild, very pleasant 12 degrees Celsius, 12, 13 degrees here in South Devon. It's actually quite nice, doesn't feel very wintry at all, right? So, again, I'm going to have to say, Greta Thunberg. How dare you? <laughs> I think I'm going to have to uh, make her uh, definitely, and uh, what you call it, an object of lampoonery and and um, and satire, and um, you know, in my irreverent and somewhat sardonic sort of way, um, while I can still get away with it, you know, um, before it becomes a crime. Sorry, I like I like milking that that bit of music there. You'll have to forgive me. <laughs> I know it gets a bit gets a bit sad after a while, doesn't it? Mm. Right. Yep. So what I wish um, to talk about today, everyone, is um, I think of that we are in an age right now, which I kind of think of as um, a kind of like uh, the last time we were in an age like this was probably in the medieval times. Um, I'm not enough of a historian to know enough about this, right? But um, we are in an age of, um, at least in the Western world, I don't know if it's like this everywhere in the world, but here in the Western world, we are definitely in an age of hysteria right now. Yes. And, um, you know, irrational, full-on hysteria, where people are just losing their minds. And um, I'm, I'm wondering, how the hell am I still sane? How the hell am I even still happy and still able to keep going? Well, I have a reason for this. I spent a lot of my younger years not feeling like I had much power that wasn't taken away from me by other people, whether they be bullies or whether they be manipulators or whether they be people who even um, would become my handlers who would do this, my speaking for me, all this. Um, especially like when I was younger, I was in a, there was a time actually I was in a band. And um, when I was in a band that was, you know, I was singer number four in a certain gothic band. And I was um, reasonably, they were already very successful before I joined. Um, and I found myself in a situation where I was only 22 and I was just being exploited and spoken for and manipulated um, and used up until I'd outlived my usefulness and then spat out, right? And this was just basically after only leaving school only a few years earlier where I was again you know found myself in a situation where I was actually too small and too physically weak to be able to stop people um, who were bigger than me um, being a certain way so I had a bit of a history shall I say back then of um, being a helpless powerless victim and it happens to you enough times you end up thinking no I'm not going through that anymore I'm absolutely not going through that anymore and so, um, when you get to that, no more Mr. Nice Guy, never again. Am I going through that? You end up developing strength of character as a result. And now I'm finding myself in a situation where I have developed that strength of character. And, um, and all the bad experiences that I had in my younger years have got me to a point now where I am strong enough mentally, strong enough emotionally, you know, to be able to cope with what's going on in the world right now. I made a few right moves in amongst all the wrong ones too, you know. I may have taken a lot of wrong turnings and made a lot of mistakes in my life, but I made two or three correct moves and I've managed to just somehow position myself so everything is right for me right now. Now, that's, to me that's miraculous. I'm just thinking, oh my God, had things have worked out just very, very slightly different, I would be in such desperate straits right now. So I'm very lucky and I do appreciate that, you know. That's the thing. But now I'm seeing um, that a lot of people are struggling financially, a lot of people are struggling mentally, man, you know. And it does seem, you know, if you are coming from a place of fear, it does seem that we are sinking into a totalitarian abyss. And it does look like there is um, a really horrible megalomaniacal power grab in the world. And there are a lot of narcissists and psychopaths and you know people like that out there. It really does look like that right now. 
But I don't think it's, I don't think that's the whole story myself. I really don't. Because I also think that there are a few good things um, happening. And I do think there are a few good things which are about to happen. But one of the things um, that, uh, how can I say, was very revelatory for me recently, if I can use that word right, was that a um, mate of mine um, messaged me because he'd been online and he sent me these videos from... Um, this video was coming from a very, very hysterical woman who was telling you how you must watch this video and you must get this message out and, and all that. And they're talking about all sorts of stuff like fetal tissues going in vaccines. I will be honest, right? I do think a lot of the people who are jumping on this anti-vaxxer thing are crazy and hysterical and you should be really really careful and really really selective about what you believe so my first reaction to that was to then put debunking uh, the so-and-so theories debunking the, th the anti-vaxxer theories into Google see what I come up with and then I realized that the debunkers the anti anti-vaxxers right are just as deranged and just as hysterical and they think that all the anti-vaxxers are all a bunch of far-right lunatics. Now, I can't find any evidence that we have a, a particularly bad far-right problem in the world at the moment. I really don't. I think that any far-right stuff is kind of like um, just a tiny little pockets here and there. They don't really have any power. They certainly don't have the power of the far left. And, um, and it does seem to me that we are in a time of mass hysteria where you've got one bunch of people on this side, another bunch of people on that, a vast chasm between um, you know, and to use um, what I say, to use a Douglas Murray metaphor, um, people who were kind of closer to the centre, well, a snow plough has gone along and thrown them on one bank or the other bank. Um, and that's basically what seems to be happening in our world at the moment. And of course, this is not the first time that we've been, you know, in an age of hysteria. And um, the problem, of course, is the hysteria. Now, I've managed to keep myself quite calm and stoic in this time. I've managed to keep myself um, reasonably um, healthily sceptical, but at the same time, I've also managed to keep myself um, reasonably mentally flexible too. Because that's the trouble. You know, if you're going to be sceptical, don't be rigid. If you're going to use your left brain, then don't switch off your right hemisphere. You know, that's the thing. So... Um, you kind of got to be able to keep uh, a good balance on, on all of this stuff. And um, it's very, very hard to do this when all the information that you're getting is coming from all sorts of places and you don't know um, who to believe or who to trust or any of it. And social media at the moment is a very, very bad thing. I'm wondering, well, why the hell am I even bothering being on YouTube? I've been making these videos for a long time and you know what? In the last three months, my um, new subscriber numbers have just plummeted. You know, um, that's what I've noticed. I kind of got to a point where I plateaued now. And I don't know why this would be. I don't know if the algorithms just don't like me very much or YouTube don't like me very much. Or, but, you know, I have, I'll be honest, I'm past caring. I, I, I was worried about that. I wanted to get above the thousand, yeah. But as I said in the previous videos, and you will see before, I only needed to make it to the thousand. Now, I'm at that point now where, yeah, if I really did want to promote myself as a brand, I could go and email a hundred high-profile people who I would like to interview and hopefully get a response from hmm, six or seven of them. And then this would uh, that would get a lot more traffic my way. I think I might do that in the future. Don't know yet. But I'm, I'm quite chilled at the moment. I'm kind of like, uh, with, my, with my low audience like this, I kind of think of myself as a long-term sleeper cell. And one of the things that I'm trying to carry through from one era to another is sanity and you know um and reason and stuff like that i'm trying to be one of the people who's having a calming sense making influence on the world and there's very few of us out there it seems but you know i knew in me um how can i say i knew in my heart or i suspected in my heart right that um because i in my earlier years, I felt like I had no control. I felt like I couldn't succeed. I felt like I couldn't live in that world when everyone else was, when everyone else was in this kind of I'm all right, Jack state. I felt like there was no inroads for me. But I always felt, uh, I couldn't really rationalize it, but I always had a feeling, shall I say, that there would come a time when the whole world 
was not doing so well and that it would become my time at that point. That somehow the rules of this reality seem to work the wrong way around for me. I'm in a, a, a kind of, um, what to say, I, I live within my own reality operating system for which the rules are back to front, arse about, face, upside down, inside out. Um, you know, so but that's all right though. I had a feeling that something was going to work, you know. So, you know, fair enough. I mean, it could go the other way. We could find ourselves in an age of prosperity in the future and um, things might not be working out for me then, you know. So it could go that way too. But the truth of the matter is that we find ourselves in a time now where hysteria is the biggest problem of all. And so it's, it's, it's infectious, it's contagious, it spreads like, um, I don't know, like, um, what's it, like, like the 28 days later zombie virus, you know, the rage virus in 28 days later, you know. Someone's bitten, someone's infected, someone's got uh, blood, uh, they've, they've got red pupils and they've got the puking blood over you. They bite someone else, they get it and it goes around and before you know it, within seconds everyone's got it. Within a month the whole country's got it. And then the whole world has got it. And it's like, you know, so um, you've got to think of it like that, that this, uh, this virus is not, well, it's not the coronavirus that we've really got to worry for. It's the virus of the psyche, the... Um, the hysteria virus. That's really what the problem is. And people are worrying about all sorts of things right now. You know, and people are, are um, even telling you that um, all sorts of other things are going to happen. Now, of course, we have to be careful and we have to be prepared for all of these things. But then we also have to be very careful um, that, uh, that we are not complicit in the scaremongering that is going on in the world. Because, um, you know, some people who are warning about, you know, things that could be happening in the future could also be putting you in a state of crippling and debilitating fear. There has to be enough people out there that are saying, right, we need to try to stop worrying about stuff like this for a little while. We need to try to come up with techniques that we can use to overcome or to quell any fears that we will feel inside ourselves because that's just as important. Being prepared for the bad things that could be happening in the world is one thing, but not becoming crippled and debilitated by mass hysteria, I think, is the single most important thing right now because this is, uh, it is like that now. It's reaching fever pitch and we've got to be able to overcome it. So that's why I do the videos I do and that's why I talk about the things I talk about. I'm trying to encourage people to transcend this. The real viruses that we have to deal with at the moment are of the psyche and it seems to be affecting everyone. You know, you've got the people who are talking about all sorts of conspiracies um, and then you've got the people who are debunking the conspiracy but then they have conspiracy theories too. And then, you know, um, they got to the point now where because everyone is living in this um, huge matrix, which is the internet, all in small balkanized worlds, and we are all living in this kind of, yeah, as um, uh, Terence McKenna called it, the balkanization of epistemologies. Um, we are all um, living in a world where we are all epistemologically balkanized, right? Living in different bubbles. And there are very few people out there, I mean, I'm, I happen to be one of them, who are, um, what you call it, eclectic inter-echo chamber people, who are looking at the discrepancies between the way one lot of people are looking at the world and another lot of people are looking at the world, and sewing a few different things together. But the truth of the matter is that everyone, it doesn't matter where they are, whether they're in their mainstream bubble, when they're in their woke bubble, whether they're in their government or intelligence gathering bubble, or whoever they are, wherever they're in their conspiracy bubble, or any of them, right? Whichever um, epistemologically balkanized, um, hermetically sealed, small reality they find themselves stuck in, they're all as bad as each other. And we need to pierce holes in these things and let some light from some other perspectives in. Because then if people could only see the whole picture, it would neutralise a lot of this hysteria. Right, so I shall leave it at that. Oh, and um, it's good to get two videos done in a day, put them out every other day. Then I can, um, I can give my brain a rest, because at the moment, I must admit, um, I like to make my videos few and far between, you know, and I like to kind of get 
I like to get four days worth, because that's what it's like, you know. <laughs> Two videos equals four days. I like to get four days worth out in one afternoon, and then I like to have a few days where I'm not thinking about any of this stuff at the moment. That's part of what's keeping me sane right now. So, see you later, alligator. See you soon, baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Also, check out our new merchandise stores where you can find t-shirts, hoodies, mugs and more. Links in the show notes below, as well as the links to all our social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, etc. Please help this channel grow. Your help will be appreciated.